you're here with us this morning. If you're here with us for the very first time, we're really glad that you're here. We've been praying for you to come. And so there are little sheets in your bulletin. These are some kind of goldenrod, yellow slash orange sheet. In this, on this, is an opportunity for you to fill out your information. That way we remember, not only remember your names, but we also have an opportunity to just kind of email you to let you know about the upcoming events that are going on in our, our church. If you're here with us for the very first time, we want you to know this, that God loves you, that God chooses to be with you, and that God will remain with you, whether or not you have it all figured out or not. And so we're grateful that you are here. And my prayer is for you this morning that you experience God's grace and God's love through us as God's people. So let's stand together. Let's spend some time singing. Uh, the band's going to lead us in some singing this morning. Morning, church. Well, we're going to spring another new one on you this morning to open with. It's new to us, too, so please be the forgiving Christians that I know you are. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
still do things the old-fashioned way rather than having a tablet we have these ancient manuscripts that we read from and sometimes it takes a few minutes to shuffle papers around I apologize for that capo two Again, church. 
And what can I do? That offer this heart, oh God, completely to you, completely to you, completely. going way back in the annals of history. For those of you that have been here a while, you'll remember the purple books that used to be in the back of the pews. This is a selection out of that. So it's 1975 all over again. This one's for Ann Miller, because I know she loves this one. And it's a good old fashioned sit around the campfire, sing song, and I know she has no idea what I just said, but that's okay, it's all good. <laughs> I love you, Ann. <clears throat> I cast all my cares upon you. I lay all of my burdens down at your feet. And any time that I don't know what to do I will cast all my cares upon you I cast all my cares upon you I lay all of my burdens down I don't know what to do. I will cast all my cares upon you. Okay, now this time it's going to be nice and slow. And it's going to be nice and loud because I know the Church of God feels this song and means this song. I want you to think of your Lord and Savior Jesus who gave it all at the cross. All my cares upon you I lay all of my burdens Down at your feet And any time that I don't know What to do I will cast all my cares upon you I will cast all my cares upon you Amen Keep it one baby was grace that taught 
We pray because it's our way of connecting with God. We have conversation and we call that prayer and that's a part of who we are because we feel the need, we're wired, we're hardwired to be in relationship and not only relationship with one another but a relationship with someone who is greater than ourselves. So we spend this time praying, not because you want to hear my voice again, but because it's our way of surrendering, relinquishing, giving up what is going on inside of our head and our hearts. So I'm going to pray on your behalf, I'm going to pray on my behalf, and we're going to talk to God. So let's pray together. So God, in your goodness and your grace this morning, God, in being bigger than all of that, all of which we are experiencing right now, in this time of waiting, in this time of struggle, in this time of anxiety, in this time, in those moments where God, life seems really overwhelming. In those moments where, God, it rains on us 
in ways that, God, those around us may not even know. God, in every one of those moments, we pray that, God, you would remind us of who you are. That, God, you would remind us that, God, you are our constant companion and friend. That, God, you are big enough and and strong enough and courageous enough to enter into those parts of our lives where, God, we want to just yell and scream and we want to... And we want to just shake our fists to the skies, hoping that you understand just how difficult this part of life may be. Whether it's raising kids, whether it's raising kids on our own, whether it's physically exhausting our bodies, whether emotionally our souls are drained, whether it means, God, that we are in need of your healing, God, if that means, God, whatever it may be of where we are in this moment in our lives, God, with, uh, with anxiety and, and, and depression, whether, God, it's that there are those that we know within our congregation and outside of our congregation who absolutely struggle with addiction whatever that addiction may be. This morning, God, we trust you in it to know, God, that no matter what we are experiencing, no matter what others are experiencing, that, God, you love us the same. That your love for us, your faithfulness to us, doesn't change based on us and what we are doing. So God, we are grateful for your grace and your love. God, we're grateful that God, you never change. That God, you continue to be all powerful and all loving. That God, you continue to be present with us no matter what is happening within our lives. And no matter what is happening in others' lives, God, that you don't change your character and your personality and who you are. So God, when we believe we get what we deserve, we pray, God, you remind us of your grace. God, when we, need, we are in need of multiple chances, multiple opportunities to turn our life to you, we are grateful for your grace. God, when we are reminded that, God, joy and peace and comfort are so difficult to find and we realize that we're the ones who are trying to find it and, God, yet you are present with us in it. And so, God, remind us that, God, you are not just the source, but you are joy, grace, and peace. So in a very anxious world, God, we pray that you would enable us, that you would empower us, that you would provide for us, that you remind us that, God, you are not a crutch, but that, God, you are the almighty God who enters in, is actively involved, and sits and waits with us. And so God, we pray all of this in your son's name, and friends, we pray the prayer that the Lord taught his disciples, and that can be found on the screens next to me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. A couple quick announcements before we send our kids to Sunday school. A couple quick announcements. And so Mrs. Biankowski and Mrs. Conberry can go and meet our kids in the back. Wait for them. Wait for me to dismiss. Because more than anything else, I know it just absolutely tortures you to have to wait. But, you know, this morning's message is all about waiting, so we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, A couple things I want to highlight in the bulletins this morning. Uh, Please know that there's some grief groups coming up in October. Uh, This will be at the Palmyra Moravian Church. Um, uh, The pastor there has led a couple different 
um, support groups all throughout her tenure as a pastor. And so there's a grief group, and then there's an addictions grief group, and they're on Wednesday evenings. Uh, one's at 6.30, and then the one after that is at 8 p.m., and they're an eight-week session. So that information's in your bulletin as well this morning. So, kids, <laughs> meet Mr. and Mrs., or meet Mrs. Convery and Mrs. Biankowski in the back. <laughs> and so the ushers, I'm going to invite the ushers, uh, those who collect our offering to come forward at this time. Uh, to collect our offering. Our offering, of course, as you know, when you give, that gives us the ability to do ministry. When you give, it gives us the ability to provide for the different missionaries that serve Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior all throughout the world. So everything we do here is done in the name of Jesus. And so why, by you giving us you know, your offering while we collect that offering is an important part of who we are because we're giving of ourselves to God in the name of Jesus. So the ushers can come forward at this time. And as they come forward at this time, we're going to pray. So let me pray with you. And so God, we ask God, you would bless our gifts and our offerings. That God, in all of this, that we will be reminded of your gifts and offerings to us in your son, Jesus Christ, and how, God, you provide for us every day. So, God, now bless these gifts so that, God, they may be used in your name, the name of Jesus Christ, to extend the mission and the vision of your church. And I pray this, God, in your son's name. Yeah, I know. <laughs> All right, guys, go ahead. So one quick announcement as the, as the ushers are um, collecting the offering. Eileen called me up this morning. She's our pianist. She normally is here with us. She called me up this morning coughing in my ear, reminding, you know, reminding, you know so she is not feeling well. So she's not here with us. So I will talk while normally, you know, music is being played. I'll talk. But... She is sick, so if you remember this week, please do me a favor and uh, pray for her so that we are reminded that we don't do life alone, that we need a bunch of people in our lives to do ministry with us and for us. So over the last couple of weeks, I've been talking about what it means to be anxious. And I've been talking about what it means to try to survive in that anxiety. And I've gone over a couple different things and and so if you were listening last week uh, to, if you weren't, a, you weren't able to be here or you listened to it again because you're like, Chuck said something, I can't remember exactly what it was. And so um, thank you for listening. I'm sorry that part of our, uh, you, oops, part of our YouTube video this past week, heard me, you heard me leading singing. I'm sorry about that. Somebody texted me and said, hey, I heard you singing this week and it wasn't good. So I said, all right, I'm sorry about that. Um, that's why I always tell my son to, um, and or Dave Convery to not to turn off my mic while I'm trying to lead singing, um, so that you don't have to hear my voice carry while singing is going on. So um, it's funny. <laughs> One of the little boys in church was running around with a Nerf gun. And I, I love Nerf guns. I really do. I have some Nerf stuff over uh, next door in the house. But uh, I said, hey, bud, why don't you give that to me this morning? I'll give it back to you at the end of worship so that you don't shoot anybody in the eye. Because it's all fun and games until you shoot someone's eye out. So um, let, me, uh, let me pray again, and uh, we'll get going. We'll get started. So, God, we are thankful, and, God, we open our hands to you this morning. God, we don't hold on to what's going on in our lives, God, because we realize that we can't do anything about it. We can only follow your lead in our approach to it, whatever it is. So we open our hands and surrender to you this morning, knowing, God, that we can't do this life alone. And it's funny, God, no matter how strong we may think we are, no matter how courageous we might think we are, no matter 
what answers we may feel like we have about what's going on around us and inside of us, no matter how good life appears to be on the outside. We know, God, that whatever we have, whatever we've done, whatever we do, that is good and right in this world, it's because of you. But we also realize, too, God, that we have a lot of questions that remain unanswered and may remain unanswered until we see you face to face. So God, in the fullness of this life here and now, God, when answers are hard and difficult to come by, remind us, God, you are in the waiting. And so God, we pray this in your son's name. So I'm a fixer. I have a problem. I like to fix things. I like to also, or at least I did at one point in my life, love to fix people too. But I'm a fixer, so one Sunday morning uh, when I was down in Deptford living there, uh, the refrigerator went like that. It just all of a sudden went. And so I decided that at 7.30 in the morning before coming up here to spend time with you two years ago, I would tear apart the refrigerator and figure out how to fix the refrigerator after viewing YouTube videos. I realized that the refrigerator needed more than just me. That it was an act of God to ever get that thing to work again. So I spent some time, my buddy Bill, uh, texted me this past week and said, hey, Chuck, by the way, remember how you said you would help me? And I'm like, yeah, dude, I can help you. What do you need help with? He goes, I need help moving some things. I'm like, all right, cool, 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 cool. What is it? He goes, well, we're moving a sectional. We're moving a refrigerator. We're moving a washer and dryer. I'm like, all right, cool, cool, cool. Nathan couldn't be there because he was working. Luke was with his girlfriend at youth group. 